Hello there. What is going on everyone? Today we're asking the question, what's next from Atomic Mass Games in terms of Star Wars X-Wing, the miniatures game? Uh, if you guys are new here to the channel, we do giveaways all the time. We have a big giveaway going on right now for a Shadow Collective core set in the form of a $70 Amazon gift card giveaway. If you're interested in having a chance to win that, all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. And uh, we're going to be asking the question today, what's next? For X-Wing, you know, uh, Fantasy Flight Games handed off everything to Atomic Mass Games and the last of the FFG expansions, the Z-95, uh, along with the Rogue class, were both spoiled recently and, uh, and it's got us uh, kind of approaching this point where the last of the FFG stuff is finally going to get kind of sent off to production and, uh, and well, I'm sure it's already been produced, I'm sure it's, it's shipping right now, probably. Uh, but we're going to be starting to get spoilers for that. But what's what's AMG going to be doing next? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, you, know, you can see I have a uh, B-Wing up here. Uh, this is a Resistance B-Wing. And, of course, I feel like that is one of those things that, uh, that FFG was probably going to be doing next. And I wonder if that would be a good uh, starting point for, uh, for Atomic Mass Games because of the fact that uh you know that's you know that would kind of round out the resistance making them very very similar to the rebellion but would it make them too similar uh because from what we see of the resistance b-wing it seems it's very similar to the rebel b-wing with, without too many differences although the uh the cockpit is uh, supposedly very, very, very similar to the Resistance transports, uh, and the, of course the ones that we see in Episode Eight, which is already in the game, uh, for that you know that that cockpit version of the Resistance transport, uh, which was largely built from a B-wing's chassis, and you could make the argument that the Resistance transport is as close as we're going to get to a B-wing, even though it's really nothing like a B-wing. But as far as the, in the canon, it's kind of built from the hull, although I would I would imagine a resistance B-wing to be a little bit more uh, a little bit more of a heavy gun platform than uh, than what we kind of have already. I also want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. Be sure to check out luxuryplaystyle.com. Get some amazing full metal tokens for Star Wars X-Wing. They are absolutely spectacular. You can save 15% if you use code VIP. Orders of $35 or more are going to get a free lightsaber nunchuck token while supplies last so uh, use that code and head over to luxuryplaystyle.com amazing tokens for lots of games not just x-wing also legion uh the uh a lot of other stuff l5r stuff keyforge you name it go go check them out you're gonna love it um but to go along with the the resistance b-wing i feel like the other kind of hole in 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 the sequel trilogy factions would be the tie dagger that's like one of those uh, fighters that as soon as people saw this you know on screen they're like well this is going to show up in x-wing it always seems like that natural inclusion and uh and i think it's i think it's definitely likely to show up uh it's uh it's it's definitely an like i think a pretty obvious one uh that amg could do if when they if and when they start working on new ships of course it does kind of also give us the question are they going to do new ships or are they going to go in other directions and i'll talk about some of the other directions they may go uh they may go towards uh, at the end of the video but uh, but the tie dagger certainly works. It was part of the Sith fleet in Episode Nine, and uh, and these guys were apparently all Sith or Sith cultists. So I think this would be a great opportunity for you to have, uh, you know, another another ship uh, in the game that has like generic Force users. I think that could be, uh, and I don't know if they'd all have to be Force users. I think this is probably something that they'd have to work out with licensing. But I think it would be. Um, I think you could have Sith, like some lower level Sith cultists that aren't, you know, you know aren't necessarily force attuned, uh, but maybe they could somehow have a cool interaction with other force users. So maybe you know, like a, a named or a restricted, um, you know, uh, force user for the Tide Dagger does something to non force users uh, who happen to also be in Tide Daggers because they have an affinity with the force. So maybe you get like a special coordinate that if it goes to other Tide Dagger, like a purple coordinate that. If it coordinates other tie daggers, they get like a bonus action on top of that, or something to that effect. And you could, that'd be a kind of a way to kind of stress that they're in the same cult, so to speak, which would be interesting. But then again, uh, the way that uh, generics are are kind of overcosted and undervalued in the game right now makes me think that they probably wouldn't do that. But they could still do something like that with, uh, you know, with with other pilots in the game, and they don't necessarily have to all be generic. They could. Uh, you know, they could even be limited to two ups, like like Sith devotee or something like that. 
think that could be uh, a pretty cool option for something like the tie dagger. Um, so there we go. There we go. Um, now, there's also the big gaping hole of the missing huge ship that uh, never really showed up. You know, we got the big squid ship. All you X-Wing people remember the squid ship drama and, and then this little meme that was out there. Um, and that wasn't really drama. It was just that we had like six months of updates on the squid ship, uh, the Trident class assault ship, of course, and we're talking about. Um, and, and I feel like the Constellar class cruiser is the most obvious inclusion. It would probably be the easiest thing to engineer in that it has a body that would be, you know, very similar to stuff that's already been done. The, you know, the CR-90 is similar in some ways to this ship, and, and it's just its overall size is right. The engines seem like they would work. The, the body is very similar to the CR-90's body, the, the, the swivel guns on top and bottom, so on and so forth. It, you know, it doesn't seem like it'd be that different. And it's also, I think, fairly recognizable, and I think it would sell. And, uh, and, and, and you know, considering that you've got, like, an extra, you know, you got a, a separatist huge ship, but not a Republic huge ship. I know, granted, there, you know, the, 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 the huge ship pack gave you pilot cards for all the old stuff that you can use with all of the newer factions, but, you know, the, the, but the balance is off right now. You have definite asymmetry. And it definitely seems like, with going with a Trident, that there was probably plans to also do another huge ship, uh, and and so I wonder, you know, how, how far that you know that made it, or if anything made it over. Which I'm I'm pretty sure that you know everything that you know was handed over, we've seen spoiled already. So I don't believe a consular class cruiser was handed over to AMG either. It wasn't in the works yet, or it wasn't far along enough in the works to have been handed over. Uh, any one of those possibilities could be true, but. Um, we'll have to wait and see because I think this would be a great, a great launch point uh, for them to kind of dipping their feet into the huge ship realm. Uh, and I think it makes the most sense, seems the most logical, and uh, I think it would work. I think, and also it would look cool. I think it's also very recognizable. Unless they want to go larger with things like the Architans or a Nebulon or something like that, I think those could work too, but those would be really, really big. And, and I, that might be a little bit too big. I know Fantasy Flight had some problems with trying to get the Super Star Destroyer for Armada out and made the, the, the engineering and manufacturing of it was not easy. So I don't know how big they really want to go. Unless, of course, they go with the option of, hey, we're going to put this one in pieces and you're going to have to assemble it. Even if it's only a partial assembly, I think I would still be fine. I would be fine with that personally. But I'm curious what you guys think. What if it was some minor assembly, like there's three pieces and they kind of clip in or you just have to glue like three pieces, but it's still pre-painted. What if there was something like that? I'm curious. Let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. Also, uh, feel free to join our Discord. We have a great Discord down in the uh, in the video description below. So we got lots of links down there. You should check them out. Also, we have uh, the other option of some different directions that they could go. And the next big wave could be simply uh, reprints of the old 1.0 stuff. You know, all of the... Uh, all of the 1.0 stuff that's not legal right now, it's not that they, or at least not legal in standard play, it's not that they want to kind of artificially limit what you can do, but it, they, they've said quite plainly it's kind of not fair, um, you know, for anybody coming into the game that hasn't been playing forever, it just doesn't have access to this stuff. And so they have said many times that they do want to get these reprints going. Um, it's unclear how fast that will be uh, and in what capacity, whether we're going to see, all right, everything is now in 2.0 in black boxes or if it's going to be like one or two ships at a time if they will sprinkle these in with new ships as far as a wave goes like you might have one new ship and three reprints and that's your new wave or it may just be all reprints uh I, you know i think i think that reprints is a very easy way to do things because you don't really have to balance anything you just have to get the card uh the cards in there and get the box art done and uh maybe see if you're going to repaint the ship or not or if you're going to re-engineer anything a lot of the 2.0 stuff had moving parts whereas the 1.0 stuff didn't and uh maybe you know hey maybe a, maybe a gunboat uh can can have some swivel wings on it maybe the new lambda uh, you know maybe they'll do a lambda and make that even uh even prettier because i think the lambda while it was one of the first first ship to have moving parts or in the first wave i like millennium falcon had the movable dish too but uh you know like the first ships that had movable parts were cool but the Lambda kind of just never felt right to me. Like, I like I want to kind of redone Lambda. I've always kind of said that. But, uh, you know, maybe they'll go crazy with the moving parts. Maybe we'll get a Phantom Shuttle, Phantom 1 Shuttle for the Ghost that, like, actually has the wings that totally fold up in and collapse and then totally fold out. Like, I, that, that seems like that would be a bit 
much, but maybe, maybe. And then there's the other option is maybe they just decide to uh, wait and see what TV and the new media and new movies and things like that are going to bring. Uh, you know, Mandalorian uh, had a lot of stuff that influenced the most recent waves of games like Star Wars Legion. Uh, and so what if we were to see, like, Mandalorian, you know, they have Mandalorians in jetpacks in space now. What if we did, got dark troopers and jetpacks in space now? You know, like, like they could do something like that. It could be a, I could even see this being, like, an OP kit that they would do, though. So I don't know if this would be, like, an expansion that they would actually release and sell, or if this is just sounds more like a thematic thing. But even if they don't do something like this, I think the Mandalorian has, you know, obviously already influenced the game. We've got... We've got already, you know, the Razor Crest. We got a whole Mandalorian wave in X Wing as well. Um, but also, there's the huge ship factor. There's Kenobi coming up soon. Uh, there's going to be new pilots on ships that we haven't seen them on before. Like Inquisitors uh, may end up having, you know, lots of new methods of transport. We've already seen some of the ships. You know, we've already seen some transport ships of the Inquisitors and that, and that Reaper and stuff like that. So we may get new pilots for existing ships. We may see some Clone Wars holdovers in the Kenobi show. Anything that's in between Bad Batch could be doing more of it. The Bad Batch ship is another one that they could do. So again, pulling stuff from the TV shows and the, uh, the Disney Plus series and any movies that may or may not get announced at Star Wars Celebration uh, are very, very likely, I think. But it may not necessarily be all new ships. Again, because if, if a new... If we get a brand new ship in Kenobi, for example, it's probably going to be three years before we see it. Maybe two, two and a half, you know. But, but you know, like, it's like when a new ship is announced, like, do they want to start working on it right away? Right? You know, like, you, like, or should you wait a little bit? Like, if FFG had waited a little bit longer, maybe we wouldn't have had the Mandalorian as the name of his cards. And they got in, in time, they were able to be like, oh, okay, we can put Din Djarin as the subtext, you know. But, like, you, you learn more as new things happen and so you, you know if you were to wait until like the fourth season of the mandalorian before designing the razor crest maybe you'd have had more information and and so on and so forth although i think they did a great job with it it's not um it's not always a great idea to start designing something as soon as you see it for the very first time we saw this once a, a long time ago in x-wing 1.0 when the force awakens core set was announced and that you had all this stuff from the force awakens before anybody had seen the movie and it turned out like they like Made, had, there was a lot of, I think, mistakes made with that. Like, all the named pilots had generic names, like Red Ace, Blue Ace, so on and so forth. Um, and then Poe was only a pilot skill 8, whereas he, so he, wasn't, he wasn't that good of a pilot, you know? And so, like, they had to go back and kind of redo a lot of those things. And, uh, and so you kind of want to avoid that by waiting a little bit longer. So if, they, if the AMG is working on anything right now, I would guess it would probably have more Mandalorian tie-ins or potentially Book of Boba Fett tie-ins, or uh, maybe stuff from Episode Nine. I think they'd want to get, or maybe even some things from Star Wars Rebels, and some more uh, some more potential uh, things. Although there's so much stuff from Rebels that's already been done. There's not a whole lot more you could really do, although Grand Admiral Thrawn is not yet in the game, and I know a lot of people would love to see him. I, I mean, but where do you put him? Obviously on a capital ship, right? Obviously on a capital ship, but, but could you put him in a Defender? I feel like... While he doesn't get seen flying a Defender, I feel like you could still get away with it because that was his ship. He designed it, so I'm sure he's got in it at some point, right? Just makes sense. And maybe he'd be a low initiative. Maybe he wouldn't be that great of a Starfighter pilot. But uh, he's a much better captain than a pilot. But he can pilot. He certainly can. He does it in the books. But he would have, like, I could see him being that buff, that leader buff. You know, I would love to... I could talk all day for Thrawn, about Thrawn, so let me just stop myself here and uh, say that's some of my thoughts on what AMG might do next for X-Wing. I want to hear from you guys, though. Let me know down in the comments section. We'll talk some more uh, about the, all the rest of the X-Wing news as it gets revealed. We've got more spoilers potentially on the way between the Rogue class, the Z-95, mini extravaganza, maybe more OP kits, maybe scenarios, maybe uh, who knows? Who knows what else is in store for X-Wing. I will talk to you guys later though. Uh, big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this possible. So thank you for your continued support. I will talk to you all later. Thank you so much. Uh, may the force be with you. Live long and prosper. So say we all. And uh, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes.